Winter is not very long here in Portugal, which is good for me because winter is by far my least favorite season. So I was very happy to see that winter is finally coming to an end and everything is waking up again. The birds are chirping like there's no tomorrow and the flowers are starting to appear in the fields and on the trees again. And we are getting ready for another growing season. I was trying to keep the garden fairly simple this year, but as always, I'm failing at that. I started sowing seeds in February to get some things going early for growing in the greenhouse. Potatoes are one of the first crops to go in the ground during spring. This year we are planting potatoes in two locations, starting with a small patch in our main garden area. Okay, now wait a moment before you go write a comment about why I shouldn't use a tiller. I've tried a few different methods here over the years, but the one that seems to work best for us is, unsurprisingly, the method that everyone else uses here. We till the soil, I dig a ditch, throw in a potato, maybe some compost and then I cover it again. After a few weeks they start to come up and after a few months we can hopefully dig up lots of potatoes. Just because one method works for you does not mean it will work for us and the other way around. After a few years of gardening here on our land I've read about and tried a few different growing methods and have settled on what works for me in my particular situation. I would encourage any gardener to do the same and to not blindly follow the latest trend on the internet. Some of my favorite days are the days I spend in the garden with our children. While it is not always easy to keep them entertained, and most of the times they walk away halfway through the task, I hope they will look back at these days with fond memories and that they learn some important skills. Well, working in the garden is very therapeutic for me. It brings me peace and calms my mind. And it is also part of how I take care of my family. It is a labor of love so that we might eat well now and in the future and that we can build skills and soil so that we might eat well in an increasingly unstable world. I put in the work every spring in order to cultivate hope within myself for a good harvest in the summer and a bountiful future for our children. First thing I want to do this morning is start planting out this bed. Um, it didn't do very well last year. Um, I'm not sure why. So I added a bunch of new compost and horse ma composted horse manure and all the things. So hopefully it will grow a little bit better this year. But I'm mostly going to put in um, some herbs and some flowers and 
things that are nice but not necessarily um, any food or something that I'm hoping will provide food. So I had some parsley already growing in there that I'm going to put back and then I have some flower starts and I'll put in two cu cucumber plants just for the fun of it but the cucumber plants need a little bit more time um, last year I had trouble with pollination here in the greenhouse for the cucumbers but I did notice that they grew better here than outside because it's shaded here so I bought some self pollinating I think that's the term uh, cucumbers so they're specifically uh, designed for greenhouses um, so they don't need the male and the female flower and they don't need any insects to produce cucumbers they were a little bit more expensive so I'm hoping they will work but yeah they need some more time to grow first <laughs> I've also decided to start sewing some courgettes and pumpkins into trays or into pots. Um, it's still a little bit early for them, honestly, because it's third week of March. But <clears throat> gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I had wanted to expand our flock for quite some time, but the thought of having 10 chickens free range all around our property, including our kitchen, was not really something I was interested in. So I made a gate so that I can properly close off this area and Martin helped me to install a few extra posts to make the fence a little bit more suitable.
aaien. Je mag er zo aaien. Zo, so, um, we have one new chicken. This young lady was the sole survivor from a fox attack at our neighbors. Um, so we took her in. She's uh, still pretty young, but I've had to get her to learn how to walk the plank and take her in and out every morning. Bo really wants to pet her. I'm gonna put her here. Kijk, en dan gaan we weer wat voor doen. Someone else wants to get out. En je moet even opschieten, schatten. A few days later, we also added eight new chickens. They are just your normal standard blue chickens, which I don't know, they're very pretty, so we're very happy that they're here. Hello. Hola. Okay, the new chickens have been here for one night now and they're doing pretty well, but establishing the packing order right there. But apparently some of them were able to fly or get over the fence. My first try to fix this issue is just clipping their wings so that they um, and only one wing so that they can't really stably fly anymore. We'll see how many of them I can catch. <laughs> These blue ones are very quick and small, but I got one. Bo loves her. <laughs> okay. This is not a tutorial. 
Google that stuff. Caught all the outside ones, and these are the easy ones because they're still in here. This doesn't hurt them. Wat doe jij het hek dicht? And it does keep them safe because they're safer in their pen. And that's the goal. Good morning. We're back to planting. Um, I had started my tomatoes quite a few uh. weeks ago, but they didn't really germinate as well as I would have liked. So I put in some more, which is fine. Um, but I had started them early in the hopes of planting some already here in the greenhouse at the end of March, which is now. But none of my plants are big enough yet, so we bought some. These are the Curasoi soy de boy. That pronunciation is terrible. Uh, they're like the heart shaped uh, traditional Portuguese tomato. But I wasn't specific enough on how many I wanted to Martin, so he got 20. <laughs> and where I was thinking about five. So I'm gonna put some up and I'm gonna plant five to ten here in this row. But that means that the peas have to come out and the beets and all the things. So that's the job for this morning. Going into my second year of growing in this greenhouse, I'm so happy that I converted it into a proper growing space last year. Many of the plants I have planted here are absolutely thriving as they are more sheltered from the harsh winter winds. It also allows me to grow summer vegetables just a little bit earlier, making for a longer harvest period. Some of the peas that I have planted for nitrogen fixing had to go to make room for my first tomatoes. Now that we have more chickens and they are not free ranging anymore, I try to give them pl plenty of fresh greens to pick at. Ours seem to love pea greens, so I was not too sad about taking these peas out. Take you with any 
Het gaat ook niet echt. Hij zit in ieder geval goed vast. Dus in ieder geval maakt hij Thread dan. But like Lego, sometimes you want to do a This time. Every year we try to make our growing operation a little bit more efficient by investing in things that will save us time. This year I decided that it was time for drip ir irrigation in the greenhouse since watering it all summer last year took quite a bit of my time. Together with the drip line we bought a timer which will automate the whole process and take that off my to-do list. For now the trans trench mm -hmm. system works very well outside and doesn't take much time so we will keep that but you will see that later. It would have been much easier to install the line without any plants already in the beds but because this greenhouse always has something growing this was not really an option. Three. Socks and sandals. Mm -hmm. Because it's still cold in the morning. Ik weet niet of dit echt zoveel makkelijker is dan met gewoon een brief. Nee. We did the consumer thing. <laughs> We chose this particular system because it gives a little bit more flexibility in where you put the little spray heads and that's good because I don't really adhere to any specific measurements when I'm planting. That's a very rewarding click. Okay, all the spray heads are in and everything seems to be connected. So uh, we're gonna test now whether uh, they all spray and are in the right spots. And then we can turn on and install the timer and program it to what we want. So that's up next. Let's see if it works. It's 11.25. Let's see how quickly that goes. We have that natuurlijk a bit aan zitten draaien ook. Zo. And then zou je deze open moeten kunnen zetten. En dan. Oh. 
for one minute. Yes. The other place we planted potatoes this year is on the terraces we cleaned last year. After two disappointing harvests, we also wanted to know if a different location altogether might be a better solution for growing potatoes. Since we do really want to grow potatoes as they can be a very important calorie crop for us. So now that we have these terraces to work with, we wanted to give this a try. We went for a bigger patch here, taking up almost all of this terrace. One of the few non-traditional methods that we use is mulching our garden beds because I've noticed that it really helps to keep the moisture in the soil and it doesn't go brick hard as it would without the mulch. So we also mulched our potatoes with straw we bought from our neighbor, which made for very easy delivery. <laughs> Here in Portugal we grow potatoes in the spring and not the summer because it gets way too hot at the height of summer for potatoes to grow well. The hope is also that we don't have to water or at least very little because spring usually comes with rain. However, uh, this winter and now going into spring, it has been quite dry so we've had to water our crops more than usual. After a winter of neglect, the garden had become quite overgrown. The final thing to harvest before clearing it all was the cabbages. The red cabbages did not really mount to anything, but the savoy cabbages got to a decent size. I harvested them all and processed them into kimchi and a few dinners that week.
The leftover leaves went to the chickens, but to my surprise, they were not really interested in them. Making kimchi is one of my favorite ways to preserve cabbage because it is delicious. The traditional recipe calls for a napa cabbage, but I found that really hard to buy or grow here, so I always use these savoy cabbages. Either way, it still turns out very delicious. I don't really follow any particular type of recipe because now that I've made it quite a few times, I just kind of measure with my heart. <laughs> Today we're uh, continuing, or I am continuing, with prepping the garden beds. Yesterday I cleaned everything out with, um, from some very tall grasses and other weeds, and it was a fun time. Um, but now it's time to continue. Uh, I'm gonna till 
three of the four beds because the other one still has a bunch of leeks and peas growing in it. I'm going to add some manure and then in a couple days I can start planting. Because it's getting warm, um, I put on some sun sunscreen, wearing my hat and uh, this is very much necessary in the Portuguese sun. I was almost there and then I accidentally put it in the grass.
so yesterday I mulched all the beds that I've made so far. Um, for now I have three beds, but looking at the amount of plants that I have, I'll probably need to prepare the other bed uh, as well, where I now still have the leeks and the peas growing. Um, that's for another day because my peppers and aubergines are not big enough yet. Uh, peppers and eggplants for you Americans. Um, anywho, so I have three beds ready to plant. Uh, we're midway in April and this month has been unseasonably hot, sad to say, and unseasonably dry. So usually in April, according to the Portuguese saying, Avril Aguas Mil, you'll get lots of rain, but <laughs> no such luck this year. But at least um, we have a few days that are a little bit cooler uh, this week and the next week we're back into the 30s or towards the 30s. So this is a good time to plant. I have lots of plants ready to go. Um, I have a couple tomato plants that are ready as well as green beans and courgettes and a couple of pumpkins all ready to go so i'm just going to plant them and hope for the best I'll water them, them in properly and uh yeah <laughs> you've seen this before you know how this works I also have tomatoes that I have grown from seed myself, but they're not super ready yet. They can go another week or so. These are the same ones, the extra ones that I had from our local shop. And as you can see, they're very, very, very ready. Um, I'm going to plant them with quite, bi quite a bit of the stem in the ground uh, because all the little hairs I'm sure you know this. All the little hairs can develop roots as well. Um, so if you plant them nice and deep, then they'll get a nice and strong root system. There is a beautiful rhythm to spring. It starts slowly with a few seeds and then as the weeks progress and things grow more and more, you add tasks to your to-do list every day. Having to care for these plants brings structure to my day, which can, can bring comfort and a sense of purpose that the winter can lack sometimes. Working on the land, repeating the same tasks every season, connects me to reality in a way that our old life couldn't. We are more connected to the seasons, the weather and the climate. It brings structure to my life in a way that I didn't really know I needed. So even though I struggle sometimes, I'm very thankful we get to live here. To grow as people, to grow our family and to grow our own food.